Welcome back to this week's Apple News with me, David. Boy, have we got a busy show for you this week. Lots to get through, including stories on keyboards, Siri, and even a hostage situation. Go grab yourself a coffee, sit down, and let's get into this, shall we? Hi, it's me, David, talking tech and audio. We're back with more great Apple news. But before we get going this week, just a reminder, if you haven't subscribed yet, well, the buttons are just down there. Maybe turn on all notifications and drop me a like as well. Really helps me and the channel out. Right, let's get into this news then, shall we? So as we race towards the era of 5G, it looks like Apple is back in the modem market. Until recently, they have relied very heavily on Samsung and Qualcomm. Qualcomm, more surprisingly, because you may remember a few years ago, there was a very acrimonious dispute between Apple and Qualcomm, all to do with the double dipping incident. Well, they kind of limped along together, almost like a broken marriage, but now the time has come for a full divorce. <laughs> We're getting to the decree, <laughs> decree absolutely anytime soon. Early as next year, rumors are saying 2023, that you'll be finding Apple's own 5G modems inside of their handsets. So how much thought do you give to the browser that you use? As you know, on our iOS devices and on Macs, they come pre-installed with Safari. But the competition is fierce to try and lure us away from Safari. And Chrome is still hugely in front, 66% of the market share it's got. But the three others, it may surprise you actually. In second place, just is Safari. And third place, it may surprise you to know, is Microsoft Edge. And into fourth place is Firefox. Firefox had a great year last year, gaining around about three to 4% of the market share. But all of those three, Safari, Microsoft Edge, and also Firefox are all running around about 10%. Let me know in the comments, which browser do you use? Do you switch away from Safari and how do you find Chrome if you're one of those 66% using it? Do you remember the acronym from years ago that Steve Jobs brought to us? B-O-Y-D-K-M, bring your own display, keyboard and mouse. Well, going by patent that's been registered in this last week by Apple, it looks like they could be uh, maybe slimming that down even further, believe it or not. They are actually working on and have put a paint in for a complete computer to be inside your keyboard. And if you think about it, it's actually a brilliant time to make that kind of uh, forward transition because as we get used to this idea of partly working from home, partly working from an office or somewhere remote, you could have your whole computer with you in just a keyboard. So all you need to do is connect it to a monitor and maybe a trackpad or a mouse and you're good to go. Everything would be in your keyboard. It's absolutely fascinating. And you can tell that I like a clean desk. Can you imagine how happy that story made me? If you're looking to hook up with me, really easy. Over on Twitter, it's D Talking Tech, and my website, talkingtechandaudio.com. Leave me your email address. I'll pop you on the mailing list, and every weekend I send out a newsletter just letting you know what's going on here in the studio. I'd love to include you on that. So we're on to iPhone 14 rumors now. Of course, a, a weekly update about Apple without some iPhone 14 rumors just wouldn't be right. Well, it seems that everything's lined up, ready for the phone at the end of the year. They went into final trial production this week, which means that they're at the stage now where they're physically putting units together and just checking that everything works cohesively, that they can get the amount of units out per hour that they need, and that everything is working and functioning and hitting their quality control. So it's in final trial production as we speak. And news this week that it looks likely that the Pro range, the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max, could be taking a big jump up in RAM. Android has always been ahead of us on the RAM, but it looks like we are now going to jump from 6 gigs up to 8 gigs of RAM on the Pro phones. Probably, we're thinking, because the camera looks like it's going to get a bump up to a massive 48 pixel camera. So maybe it's just to deal with the amount of information that, that camera is going to be capturing, but it looks sure that we're going to be getting a bump in the amount of gig we get in our Pro range of phones later this year. And in the same week that the phone goes into its final trial production, the much talked about AR VR headset from Apple also has moved on out of prototype and it's now gone into a stage called EV2, which is engineering validation test two. After that, it moves into the design validation test where 50 or 100 units will be produced. And after that into production validation test, again, at the same stage that the phone is currently at just to check that everything is working. But with that advance, it looks absolutely sure that we're gonna get a headset sometime Time. The best money now is that they're going to skip 2022. There's so many Macs coming this year. They want to do it at an in-person event, which still isn't really on the agenda this year. So it looks almost certain now that the headset will be released. Probably, we're thinking, going by Bloomberg News, certainly next year at WWDC in 2023. But it's coming. So I mentioned at the top of the show that we had some Siri news. For the first time in a little over two years, another voice has been added to Siri. In the beta version of 15.4 that was released this week, 
week, there is now a voice that's called Voice 5 in the Siri settings, and it looks set that it's going to make it into the main release due for 15.4 later in the summer as well. All Apple will tell us at the moment is that it was recorded by a member of the LGBTQ plus community, but it looks set that it's going to be part of the full release coming this summer. I blog regularly and you can find details of that in the description below. Well, in one of the blogs I wrote recently, I mentioned about the brand new store that Apple was opening up in Abu Dhabi and it looks absolutely amazing. For the first time in any of Apple stores worldwide, it uh, featured absolute black granite. It looks stunning. It looks absolutely sensational. There's some pictures on my blog and uh, the store, if ever there was going to be a store that looked like that and exotic, it was always going to be Apple store in Abu Dhabi. But uh, that's on the tick list or the bucket list. I want to get out there and take a look at it myself. I mentioned at the top of the show that there was a hostage situation this week at Apple store. It was Apple store in Amsterdam. It's remained closed now for four or five days. It was a situation for a time. The police were in attendance ever so quickly. There were people in the store at the time of the hostage event. They were all released safely. No one was harmed. The police have decided not to make any further statements other than one tweet they put up mentioning that the store had had a situation. But as yet, we don't know what the event was over, but everyone was safe and the police got it back under control very, very quickly. Still more news to come on the show this week, and the first of those stories is to do with fairer working conditions for employees in Apple stores. There's been a little bit of discord amongst some of the employees over recent years. Apple have taken heed of that and have listened and have increased the number of days leave they can take up to 12. And allowable reasons for leave will include now both family and mental health issues as well. Also, another great addition to that is there's gonna be discounted emergency backup for care of children and elderly relatives as well. All in all, it just seems Apple are being a little bit more progressive. They're actually listening to the employees in the store. And let's face it, they are our faces day to day around the world of who we see representing Apple. So I think it's really crucial they take care of the workers. And I'm sure by giving them more days leave and also the fact that they're now able to take care of elderly relatives and children. I think it's big steps forward and Apple clearly are trying to demonstrate they do listen and care about the guys and girls that are working in the stores. So are you an Apple Watch wearer and are you looking to trade up to the Apple Watch 7? If that's the case, I've got some great news for you. Through until the end of the month, so you've only got a couple of days left, Apple are willing to chip in uh, $235 as a trading value towards your old watch. The watches that you can trade in are the 6, the SE, uh, series 5, Series 4, Series 3 and Series 2 and you need to be living in the US, Canada, UK, Italy, Spain, Germany or the UAE where they've got that lovely new store. But if you qualify for that, take advantage of it. It's a great offer and it'll get an iPhone 7 on your wrist with a possible trading value of $235 against your old watch. One more story before I leave you this week and it's to do with iMessage. You know recently there's been all these stories about blue bubble, green bubble. Well, even the rich and famous sportsman can't get past without being affected by it. And Jarrett Allen, a NBA player, basketball player, apparently always been an Android user, but he had to part way with his beloved Android this week and buy himself an iPhone because he couldn't be part of the team's group iMessage. <laughs> Poor little love, my heart really does bleed for him. So that's all the news I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, give me a like and also turn on all notifications so you never miss another one of these videos. If you want to listen to me, then there is a podcast available as well. It's on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and there's links in the description. You can find me over on Twitter, don't forget, D Talking Tech, and I'd love to include you on my member's mailing list. And to do that, you need to go to my website, talkingtechandaudio.com, and leave me your email address. But that's it for this week. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.